Hello Grindy School, this is the Definite Article here and I'm going to be recording the first part of my new series today. It's a follow on from the YouTube series I did called How to Play 2NL Zoom and this one is going to focus on moving up to 5NL after, um, after having played 2NL. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, a few things that we're going to focus on today. Um, uh, mainly the differences between 2NL and 5NL, how how you need to adjust, um, and and in general we're just going to talk about that uh, throughout the video. Um, I'm going to I'm going to be pointing out several points when they arise, but also um, I'm going to be um, pointing out some more general things which arise throughout the video. Um, so, I think the main thing that you have to be aware of is that 5NL is, although it's significantly tougher than 2NL, and, and indeed it's probably the biggest single difference in poker, it's still not tough, it's nothing to be scared of, and although, although you are essentially playing for two and a half times the stakes, in... In, in at least most of the Western world, it's still not a significant amount of money, so you still have a lot of people who just come and play for whatever they think, oh, it's only $5, I'm, I'm going to call to see that flush draw, I'm going to call to see that gut shot. So you really can milk a lot of people for value. Um, with that said, you don't get nearly as many fish. Um, while, if you notice in my 2 and video, there might, there might be two or three fish per table. Whereas here there are, poss um, I'm guessing it's going to be between one and two at most tables, um, and th that's because it's not just the lowest state people can play. They can they they can get drunk. They can donk around at anymore, and as a result, you're going to get some people who uh, f few few people who are just going to do everything completely wrong. We're going to see that fairly large here. We expect his calling range to be an elastic, and really. When when he calls a flop, I, I expect him to have a have a king or, or better or jack ten of the vast majority of the time. So we're just going to bomb turn river and and expect to get called a ridiculous amount of the time. And when he does this on the river, but before he took this line, it it was a good spot to consider over betting because he has a lot of jack x in his range. Um, which he might not be able to fold, but this often indicates that he isn't too confident in the strength of his hand. Um, so although we're going to make a very substantial raise, we're not just going to shove. Um, and indeed he folds. I'm, I'm guessing he had some, some kind of king, because I really can't see people folding um, jack x for less than a shove there. That's 5 and 0. Especially 5 and 0 fish. Uh, with two overs, we, it, it's fine to see bet this, even though he's not folding an unreasonable amount of see bets, and we and we can also barrel kings in tens, etc. And obviously, we're going to do that. When he min raises his turn, we're actually not guessing the odds to continue, so we can just fold. We expect him to have a set the vast majority of the time, because people aren't bluff raising turns and nearly enough still. Um, and this texture is fine to see, but um, with this hand we have decent equity, we have lots of turn cards we can barrel. And that's a good sort of card to include in your range. It, 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 it allows you to continue aggression with, with a wide range. And from a balance perspective, that's important because um, it, mean, it means you can realistically bluff more um, because you have equity. Equity with your bluffs, and for, and from and just from a general um, vacuum perspective, it's it makes bluffs more profitable. Obviously, if if you have a, a decent amount of equity with them, I mean uh, we're assuming he's fairly bad, but that's this flop still isn't the best. Um, the other main difference I think between two and L and five and L is that the regs aren't completely dumb anymore. Um, and that's not to say all 2 NL regs are completely dumb, but there are a huge number who don't do really awful rubbish stuff. Um, we're value betting this turn because 
we competitors have a fair amount of diamond hands, very very rarely aceps, and often like one pair of hands that he can, con con he can continue with. Um, yeah, I I think that also it indicates that if you have been a two and L player, you likely have to play a little bit tighter um, than you have been than you've been used to. Although although we have a club draw here, this is just a trash hand, and we can't be certain that half pot bet is weak. Um, while at uh, two and L, you can just get away with playing 40% of hands profitably because there are so many people who are so bad post-flop. At 5-0 you really can't. Um, that's not to say I would recommend re playing 40% of hands at 2-0 because I think it's still going to be suboptimal for all but the biggest all but the biggest crushers. And those people pro probably shouldn't be playing 2-0 for long anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I, as usual, I, I recommend when moving up a stake to slightly tighten all all your ranges you can not necessarily you, you don't necessarily have to open any suited combo on a button that which you might be used to um and just really you need to, you can make some small adjustments to your own game you can tighten up a bit you can decide not to make thin um, it's, it's quite so thin value bets because people are going to be a slightly more capable of folding um, every time you move up a limit in the micro stakes but um, you really shouldn't be making uh, significant over adjustments because people still um, there's not a huge amount of difference between the ability of regs at any, at any two limits um, I'd say from what I've from what I've heard, I've never played this. I've never played this high, but I'd say that the first time that really happens is between 100 and 200 NL, and and 200 NL players tend to be seen as significantly better than 100 NL players. Um, I'd like to quickly address something from I think uh, fr from a famous forum thread. Um, Veneer, uh, I, he's a um, Guy who uh, who's who's done a who's done a couple of challenges of moving up the micro stakes. This is close to the bottom of our range, so we should probably bluff it. Um, um, he recommends in his 2010 thread, I believe, that you start playing new stakes with 50 big blind stacks. I really wouldn't recommend that anymore. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he would still recommend that. The reason being that. Um, the strategy changes significantly um, from playing 50 big blind stacks to 100 big blind stacks, and I think you're just going to end up making a lot of mistakes due to your stack size. Uh, this is a bit of a thing called pre-considering. He's not raised yet, but when he, when he checks a flop, we're, we're still a little bit concerned that he's doing something daft with ace or kings, but I think it's a fairly clear value bet. So yeah, I, I I wouldn't recommend using a smaller stack to. Um, I th I think the idea is it mitigates the variance a bit, but that that effect is really is, isn't significant, especially when you're likely going to take a fairly large hit to your win rates. Um, I I think the other idea is that you uh, you get some reads on a player pool. Um, I'm just going to say higher higher up this flop would be a check, but at two and but at five and L I think it's fine just to see better value. Um, Yeah, um, but really, the re I, I also don't think the reason to play a pool thing is really uh, significant anymore. Um, with with so much money in the pot, I think calling a reasonably playable hand on a button should be standard. Oops, sorry, my wires are getting tangled. But but because range is so, so strong in a five-way pot, we just plan to fold to a bet here. Um, against the fish, we can set mine here. Um, in in general, in, in general, I wouldn't recommend set mining too wide against um, 
busting and cut off opens just just because you don't you're not getting the implied odds you need very often against given given ranges are so wide um to to make the set man uh, this is close i i, I think a 10 is about the best on this flop just, just because we fold out so much so much equity but we're not that far ahead um well obviously before the nine comes on the turn that uh when he double borrows this card he very he's very rarely bluffing i mean he, sometimes he can have diamonds but a lot of those diamonds are ahead of us anyway um so here we because it's still quite a wet flop we're gonna bet it's reasonably big uh quite a wet board rather I mean, we obviously don't mind guessing um, fourfold just because there are so many bad um, river cards. Um, if you think you have a significant edge at the table, Ace-10 off is absolutely fine to open on the gun, but I'm not going to because, in general, uh, the idea of the series is for somebody who's moving up and they probably won't want to open Ace-10 off under the gun. Because he's a fish, we can flat this. Um, and again, um, we're likely using different bet sizes with Jack X and um, Bluffs here against Fish. When you see Bet Spot, he's, he's strong like 99% of the time. And here, I don't really see any, any point in bluffing because he's not folding made hand. Um, and we actually beat any, any, of his, any of his air that he might fold. So, just checking back his almost certainly best I, I mean actually that's one of the very few examples of hands he might fold which beats his but A he's not always going to fold them and B um, I mean sorry I'm just going to interrupt myself you can consider defending jack 7 off there but again it, it's not something I'd recommend for somebody just moving up to a stake um, yeah it, it, in general he, he may not fold 5-4 um, suits and, and also that makes up a very small portion of his range that's uh, and it's a sufficiently small portion that's it shouldn't change our, our play significantly I think given we have no reason to think this guy's bad um, we can check the flop happily um, obviously check calling and and we have no reason to bet this turn again um, we probably Okay, now we, now we definitely have to bet the river, and I think he rarely has a big flush, but but I think his calling range is likely inelastic. If he wants to call a flush, he's calling a flush, unless we bet a very large percentage of the pots. So um, I don't I don't think there's much merit to betting tiny uh, to try and induce the calls with to induce the call with small clubs. Or whatever, or a king, and he probably just doesn't have many king x in his range anyway, because he's most because he's mostly about the flop. Excuse me for a second, my throat my throat's a bit dry. Um, I'm I'm going to open ten three suits on the button here, but don't think that means you have to. Same goes for ten seven suits in the cut off. Uh, this is almost certainly a call and nothing else ever. Um, especially considering we want to keep this guy in the pots. It's always it's always a worthwhile consideration in, in deciding how to play a range, uh, whether there's a player who you want to keep in the pots. Um, for instance, normally uh, I personally wouldn't have a flatting range in the small blind against the bus against the button open. But um, when there's a when there's a fish or or a weak player in the big blind, I think it's fine to have a flatting range. Um, and this is a pretty clear set mine. Uh, I, I was just seeing if I could make that thirty five cents, but. Um, not without typing. And here he's clearly bad based on his four bet sizing, so he can so he can make a reasonably large five bet without being scared that he's going to change his 
change his playing much based on it. And here we're probably going to bet like a dollar on a flop and shove the turn. Actually, well, when he does that, a a we're never folding ever at, at any point ever. But also, there's no point in shoving, especially when we have the ace of spades blocker because we gain nothing. But if but if he checks us in, we we obviously have to show ourselves. And at this point, I think just sticking in the final four to six cents is probably best, just so he just just so he can't dis decide somehow with King Jack of Spades or whatever that he's going to check fold blank rivers. Getting such great odds, I think calling's fine, and this is a good flop to donk because we don't expect the pre-flop raiser to see bet often, especially given his tendencies. And yeah, this is just what happens. Uh, still, still at, at five and zero. Don't worry that you're going to get no, um, no absurd action. Um, and and of course, you still get that a bit at every, at, at every limit, but it gets rarer and rarer. And obviously, by the time you get to five k and to five thousand and zero, if you see people playing like that, you this table around them fills up with people scripting within about three seconds. If that's seriously, um, we could consider flashing this, but but with a guy who seems like a fairly aggressive three besser, it's not worth it. Um, on the, on this flop, we could, we can consider see betting to fold out to fold out to fold out equity. Sorry, um, but I think just checking is probably better. We we actually achieve very little by see betting. Um, as in, we rarely fold out better or get called by worse, uh, and we don't really want to blow the blow the pot with such a marginal hand. Uh, I'm assuming he's probably bad, but yeah, I think I think considering the big blinds passive and this guy's probably a fish, we can we can happily call in a small blind here, um, and we can probably just check fold this flop because we're not we're not worried about him um, exploiting his hand. It's very close to the bottom of our range anyway, so. In, in case you haven't seen my prior videos, um, I'm going to say that I do tag people as fish very liberally. It's just it's just to indicate to myself that I've seen something which indicates that they probably are a fish, which is actually a very wide range of considerations. It includes uh, obviously we're just shoving this. Um, oh, okay, I mean I I, th I think he plays a hand well, but. Um, Oh, you're not. It, it, by no means are you always going to run into aces there. Um, yeah, I, I, as I was saying, I, I tag people as fish very liberally just because I, th I think it's useful to remember that um, to not have to remember that somebody was playing one table or or somebody was a gold star, a bronze star, even. Um, or that, or. or to quickly have a notice w without having to look at your hood that, so that someone's been playing 40, 11 or whatever. Um, you should very rarely be folding anything against a small blind min race. You, c you can just design your um, uh, calling in three best ranges as you please. Uh, and, and I think we should raise this flop. Um, we have all combos, of, all combos of, sorry, all combos of two pair except for five two off probably in that spot. Um, so we do. So we do want a raising range. We obviously also have all sets again against a small blind range. We can probably fold, uh, raise a stronger king X for value as well. Um, 
So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely raised, and, and considering he's a fish, we expect him to call too much too wide anyway. Uh... So, yeah, if if you see yourself in this video and I'm uh, and I'm tagging you as a fish, don't be offended. It's it's nothing personal, and, and by no means is everyone I tag as a fish a fish. It just means um, it. It it just means that you do some that you do something which could be seen as fishy. Um, again, further examples: open limping, um, min bessing, or min three bessing, or using any other sort of absurd sizing. O open shoving is an instant fish tag in the nose, um, and that's one of the things I think is very rarely defensible unless you have less than a twenty big blind stack. I'm getting aces a lot today, which is very pleasing. Uh, I think this flops a check call. Um, we can possibly get get called by worse from time to time, but against fish, we can just uh, throw balance up, throw balance out the window and, and bet big when we have a big hand on this texture and small when we don't. Uh, we we fold the turn. It's it's not it's not that low in our range, but we don't expect them to be bluffing that very often. So um, we think it's fine, especially considering how well that's texture hits his range pre um we expect him to have a lot uh, a lot of pair hands on the front which which check back um and also i i don't think people are bluffing too over there very often But yeah, that, that's also something which can help you with um, moving up with new player pools. If you do use very liberal tagging, um, just just so you have as much information as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, it's, it's essentially a very good idea uh, against this. Against this, we can just fold. We fold small uh, fours in a small blind because we. Although he's fairly tight passive, um, we we don't expect him to uh, to um, have an, have an abnormally tight range there. Um, so we don't have the implied odds that we really need, especially as a small blind, which is probably the worst position to be in. Um, although although it's one of the uh, positions where people make the biggest mistakes, so it's one of the places where you can get the most reciprocal value. Uh, this is clearly a bet we can get calls from some ace high hands, some worse pairs like nines through sixes, some uh, ace jack, ace queen, queen jack type hands, if, if he has some. Oh, he don'ts. Um, I think against the fish we can raise this. We don't really want, we don't really want to raise in range against this on, again, um, on this board against strong players, but uh, in general we just want to get money in there and He's he's going to defend much too wide against raises. Uh, we could sometimes fast forward this, but we there are situations in which we can play uh, nine eight off for a min raise. With fish here and here, we can raise this, especially considering one of the players behind us is in it. And especially considering we have a we expect to have a significant edge at the limit. Um, I think it's I think this is better as it as a check give up. It's still pretty it's pretty low in our range and it has it struggles when called. Um, so and and to be honest, we still beat some of his hands uh, given his uh, statistics. But similarly, I think I think this this plays better as a bet. We can hit of cards a lot more often and and also nearly all of his folding range has significant has fairly significant equity against us uh, 
Um, I prefer checking back for spots against the reg. Um, against the fish, against the fish, it's much it's much closer. But I still don't think we can get caught by worst and often enough to justify it. Uh, um, when he checks turn, I think sometimes we can get caught by five x two x. Any any good shots off you, um, pretty much. And sometimes worse King X. Uh, don't I don't see as much as going to call two streets, though, no. which which we beat and yeah. Obviously, obviously when you value bets as thinly as that, you have to accept that sometimes you're going to be behind. Um, this, this is pretty close, but I'm going to see bet just because I expect people to make lots, lots of folding mistakes against see bets. Um. And, and and we do have a, have an okay spade to back it up. Although I don't think we'd we'd value back the turn if we hit. Uh, this board crushes a big blind defense range, and we have some showdown value against that which hasn't hit it. So I think just um, checking back the flop and folding against this turn sizing is fine. I think I think it, at five and L this probably plays best with a C bet because we expect people to fold too much. But um, on that turn card we just have nothing, so check folding is best. You'll notice that I'm still not implementing much of a light three betting strategy. Um, at least over this sample, uh, I probably still am making some of the more obvious light three bets. Okay. Going to take a note on that, um, but I really don't see the point in make in in really con being concerned about uh, bluffing enough. Um, at least at, at least at this limit. So I think I think you're still going to get action on on your value hands when you three best, even if you have an extremely small bluffing range. You should really be you should really be bluffing because you think it's going to be profitable rather than because you think um, you need to balance your range or whatever. Um, again, I'd again at a higher limit. I'd like to present my range here and uh, my checking range here and check call this hand. But I think it's fine just to bet here. Um, we're going to call. We expect people to go crazy often on um, paired boards just because that's what people do because they think oh nobody ever hits these boards without realizing that they themselves don't have any many value hands at all and again and again small turn river bets we just have to call down and okay that's obviously terrible um i mean it, it, against our actual hand it's, it's probably pretty much the optimal line but against against our range especially considering we still have all, all the other pairs there it's pretty horrendous you just value cutting yourself and and again by no means do you need to uh, um, call that pre if you're not um, confident at the limit yet Ag uh, against this fish we're just going to bet bet jam this texture it plays best like that especially with the ace of club blocker And yeah, um, here it's close. I don't expect him to have Jack X often, but I think he can have Spades the way he played the hand. He can also have Ace King. Um, and more, more to the point, I don't expect him to uh, fire two barrels as a bluff off nearly often enough. Uh, this is just a fold. This guy has all the other pairs, and we don't. So there's n really no need to um, to start floating very wide because he can just pretty happily value bets most of his range on most rivers. Um, I think this is probably a call. Just let me think think about it for a second. Yeah, because I think he bets most of his flush draws on a turn at some stage. Um, and obviously he sometimes has some king x but with a gut shot on a board which hits very few people um, at all often i think just leading is fine 
but yeah, um, I think I, I think that's a hand with nines. He's going he's going to be bluffing more, um, way more often than he has a value hand there because why is just how ranges work on it, given the uh, action so far. And and I really doubt he's controlling his bluffing frequencies in any reasonable way. Again, I'm just going to check this back for showdown for showdown value. I, I don't think sea blessing is horrible, but um, but it, it's nice to have some hands in your checking range which can call down. Normally, I wouldn't recommend calling cold calling three bets very wide, but against this, I think it's absolutely fine. Uh, 47. We expect this guy to be really bad, um, so we can stack him fairly often when we hit a 9 and we're getting best than 20 to 1 stack odds, so, or close to 20 to 1 stack odds, and this is going in part 2, so I think calling's fine. This guy has queens pretty often. Awesome retarded check jam hand. I, I really don't like having... Okay, that's up. Both players played the hand absolutely horrendously. Um, I don't hate having a... Um, checking King 3 there. If you have it, although having it pre is pretty bad. Um, but... Um, I think it's always to check call rather than check jam. And that's just because it's nice to have some king acts in your checking range there. Um, yeah, it helps you play turn rivers when you check, turns in rivers when you check. Um, more to the points, I think you don't really get called by worse when you check charm. I mean, obviously, if you know that your opponent's going to check, going to bet call of pocket eights, then yeah, then you go with them. But We're going to check back the turn and, and bet the river because he has so many random diamond hands. And here we're just going to hope that somebody has something they want to call with and bet three streets. There are very few turn cards that can make some, someone happy with a hand which which don't improve them to beat as often. Um, okay, that's not that's not strictly true. They can hit some two pair with. Uh, with King X, but so although we crush the board, I think it's probably worth just um, getting it in. Uh, just checking my sizing's okay. I think it probably is. I should have three, but that I'm, I wasn't thinking it, it, against the fish, especially. I'm sorry, but, the, but but this is just horrendous. You really, you should really know what you're doing um, against the four bet before you three bet. When he checks the flop, when both players check the flop, we very rarely expect to see um, good hands. So we're just betting to pick up the pot. He's he's often going to have queens or jacks, so we can take off with multiple barrels, and he's often going to have whatever random crap he wants. Yeah, I, I think if you three bet Ace King in that spot you have to know what you A what you're doing against the four bet and B that what what that is is a shove. Uh this plays pretty well as a C bet. Uh gonna make it fourteen because it's a dry texture. There hasn't really been much interesting action in this video so far, but I think this um, enough, especially with the, with the general considerations, to uh, um, for, for it to still be for it to still be useful. Um, 
I'm, I'm here we're not especially happy about his junction for a hand but we have to call the flop um, on on the turn we can possibly fold okay we can't fold now but um, despite the fact that the flush completed but yeah um, I think the, uh, as a general rule, rule you're just going to see so much dumb stuff when you play fish that um, even if even if you don't reasonably beat beat any reasonable value range, and also you can't see how they're bluffing, you have to assign some a reason a, no, a big number in fact of random spaz combos to their range. This is easily just a fold, especially against that sizing. That plays fine either as a three best or a call. Folding is the only bad option. And obviously we're just folding that flop. We're tackling him as a fish because of his because he made three bet. This guy's probably gonna jam now or something. Uh, I mean, he has reasonably regular stats so far, but min three rescue is just something you shouldn't really ever be doing. And and you'll note notice we've, we've been folding as well to a really large number of sea bets so far. Um, I think that's mostly because of the sample size, but also slightly because we don't expect people to explode us. Uh, I think this is okay to delay to see, but when when they check again, I expect them to have a lot of showdown value hands, um, which mostly beats our hand. So our hand actually loses uh, value against their passive ranges. But that's actually a good river card for us because we now chop with the rest of the ace highs. Um, with that said, we don't expect him to really fold any pair, so... Yeah, okay, he played that hand pretty badly. The turn is all, always the best in his spot. We Actually, with a fish in, this, in a big blind, I'm going to flat this. Oh, he's under the gun. Uh, it still doesn't make a difference. I think that plays better, better as a flat. And we're just giving up here. I think one of the biggest leagues of people at, at the limit is um, against a, a, fish, a fish zone of the gun raise, we can call this here. Um, one of the biggest leagues is wanting to win every part when really you should just have, you should just give up a lot on losses a lot of the time really. Uh, we expect him to fold most of the time he checks, so. Betting is almost certainly fine. Um, also, given positions, we don't have as much showdown value as we as we otherwise would with Ace Ten on that on that flop most of the time. Um, We're three betting this because it's a small sample size, and we really assume that his proof up raise um, stats will tend towards the population mean significantly um, over that sample. So I expect his true stats is probably something in the 17 range. So I think. Um, I outlined the two main differences between 2 and 0 and 5 and 0 at the start of the video, but just to re-emphasize them, there's a few fewer fish. The ones that are there are often less awful, and um, also the regs are slightly better. The regs have been good enough to beat um, 2 and 0 for the most part, which which isn't always true of the 2 and 0 regs. Uh, to be honest, we expect his fold um, irritating him at the time here, but just in case he doesn't, I think we have to bet.
This is never anything but a what's it called? Um, his range should be quite strong for sea bassing up flop three ways, but obviously we're not folding enough for sure. Um, this end's close. I, th I think I prefer betting this end because when he bets a flop three way, his range is stronger than when he bets it heads up, and so we stand to gain more from from we stand to fold up more better hands than we otherwise would. I think it's a check if the flop was heads up though, almost certainly. We're going to squeeze this to isolate this guy. If if he four bets, we have to fold, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think the way he plays a hand is probably fine given his stack size, but. Uh, I'm not used to sizings at this limit. Um, I think that's roughly the right sizing. Um, against a min raise, I'd make that 50 cents, so I think 56 is good there. We're interestingly deep here. Uh, we think he's probably not very good. Um, so we can still get some decent value here, but oh, this is kind of frustrating. <laughs> I think we have to peel once at least, and that's a turn card which we can often think about folding at some stage. I'm just wondering whether we, can, we should fold this turn. I don't, th I don't think we can because lots of fish are going to check check min raise the flop with some random top pair there. Um, but I think we should fold the river. Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe we should fold the turn, it's close. Yeah, yeah, I, I should clarify, the, ri the river is definitely not the point of decision there. Um, Uh, in, in general, I think that donk bets tend to represent uh, a range which is condensed. So people would prefer to check raise for their strongest hands, but also they don't they, they don't really like donk betting any, anything but but hands which have something and jaws. So I think. Um, it's going. It's going. It's going to be pretty rabbit. Oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, I, I, I mean, we have to peel here, but okay. Obviously, we're never folding now. But I think this guy has queens or aces, uh, given his stats, a reasonable amount of the time, which obviously makes a flop check men raise very frustrating to play against. With mostly nets behind, I think raising five four is is fine. Um, yeah, that's, we don't have to shove the turn by any means, although that's not the greatest river. Yeah, okay. I, d I didn't expect him to have sevens pre, but it's, it's definitely a mistake to have sevens pre there, but... You know, I think it's also I think it's also a pretty big mistake for him to check the river. I think um, against lots of people at, at this limit, he can still get uh, calls. He shoves called with aces, ace king, um, which makes which is a much bigger portion of of anyone's range than what the value hands really are there, which is kings, queens, and ace king of hearts. Uh, we see Bessing is small because, well, we want to see better range more here, and we don't think he's terrible, so we don't, we can't really use um, super exploitative sizing. I think um, 
some of the, some of the remaining videos are, are, go, are going to be uh, theory videos of just some not advanced but not absolutely introductory concepts that can help people with um, 5 and L. Uh, possi possibly one on um, improving one's hand reading. Um, but also, uh, this is an obvious C bit. And this, is, this isn't a barrel f um, for the reason A, that we expect them to have value hands most of the time, and B, even from a balanced perspective, this is a turn card in which we should probably check our range. Um, the awkward thing is here, we're not getting odds to, odds to continue. Um, against a good player, it's, def it's definitely a spot where you can consider check raising that hand. Um, But yeah, um, the con the concepts I'm I'm hoping to talk about possibly uh, a very introductory video, a very basic video on balance. So although it's not something that you need to be oh no balance at five and out, I think you need to be. I, I think it helps to be aware of what it is, um, just so you, uh, j j just just so you don't end up three betting like eighty percent so against some guys or whatever. Which is fine if they don't adjust, but they will adjust. I want to three about this, but I think with the fish in the pot, a core is better. Um. With with three betting slightly bigger than normal because of the stack size. This flop with Ace Four, I think we just need to check fold. Um, it's pretty much the bottom of our range in this spot. We don't expect them to fold often because it's much the flashing range, um, and we have no equity when called. I mean, I, th I think possibly min raising the button at five and all, at five and all is a mistake because people are going to make much bigger post flop mistakes that you want to maximise the value of your edge. But I, I don't I don't think it's a big one because people are still going to fold significantly too much to button raises, which is the reason why you, you min raise. Um, and. Either way, having the button and raising the button with a wide range is just going to basically be printing money at this limit. Uh, against somebody who four x is a cut off, I think we we can assume they're bad, so we can we can set my inducers there. This is a check call all day, every day. Um, it's just too strong to fold, and raising is just silly. We don't do, we don't achieve anything by raising. I, I think on this on this turn card, we can just fold. We don't expect them to. Excuse me. We don't expect them to barrel it wide. I mean, because he's a fish, sometimes he's just sometimes he's just doing something silly. So, so there is a small item for calling, but especially given given his sizing, but I think in the long run we're just going to make more money by folding. Um, again, somebody who looks like a bad reg, we can. Uh, this is not this is a good spot to lead the turn because he shouldn't be barring his turn card nearly, uh, nearly at all. Um. With that said, 
I think this river card is probably one of the best one of the best of bets. Um, if he calls with Queen X, it's obviously a disaster because he's basically calling his whole range. But um, it com it completes more than half the draws. Obviously, it puts another card on to Queen X on the board. I think we should bet the turn here. By the way, if I wasn't really paying attention. Um, yeah. So, and and also, we block some of his nutty combos. Again, against his stack size, we can just get it in happily. Yeah. Okay. Uh, obviously, we're going to be behind some non-zero percentage of the time, but well, some pretty large percentage of the time, in fact. But uh, we're ahead so so often when we get it in, and also we can expect some folds. Um, that's I think jamming's probably when probably better than flatting. Uh, I mean, so somebody who who has a ten big blind stack to start at hand and and raises three x is probably going to sometimes be raised calling like six two off or something. Uh I think squeezing this is probably good. With the fish in the pot. We can probably widen our bluff squeezing range at um at five and all. These people probably aren't adjusting properly. I'm going to record a couple more minutes of this and I'm going to finish the first part. Um, I may record the second part directly after, so um, if there's anything you'd like to see, it might not appear until the third part. But certainly, um, certainly let me know if there is anything and um, I will endeavour to include it. Though obviously if, there's, if there are hundreds of people asking for dozens of different things each which would which would be delightful by the way uh, it, <laughs> it really would be interesting and um useful um then it's of it, it, it's obviously not going to be the case i can cover everything um given the depth in which i think it's going to be useful for me to talk about a lot of the concepts for this series um the plan is likely going to be for concepts to, to do a, a few videos with three or four short, short segments on different concepts. Uh, we're opening this in small blankets is bad. Um, we can raise this. Um, deep, we can probably call this against it. It's well, especially with the overcall. Yeah, so, um, the, yeah, so the concept will be like that, so, uh, we can consider raising this flop, um, we don't really want to raise range on, on this flop as a default, but, um, I don't think it's, it's bad by any means to have one, uh, in the spot where you can explosively play. Okay, let's have a look. I think I think we can assume some decent implied odds on a nine, but not an incredible amount on a four. Still guessing three to one. I think we have to call. Um, for, from a theory perspective, this is definitely a bet, but I don't think I can trust these guys to fold ASX ever. So I think we I think we should just give up there. The reason it's a theory perspective is, is that we don't really have anything which blocks anything relevant in our range which wants to bluff. Um, and it's also the nut bottom of our range. We have absolutely no showdown value. So, there's that. But, um, as I said, it's, it's probably a spot where we want to develop an exploitative strategy of not having a bluffing range. Even, even though we'd still be jamming all sets. And I think we might actually raise a turn with some of our sets. He's folding too much to see bets, so we can just get away with betting 100% on this texture. I don't know why I have so many hands on this guy. I guess he used to play 25 or something. Yeah, um... 
I think I'll play until until we reach 500, 500 hands there, then finish. We've definitely run run well today. Um, there's a couple of spots in which we haven't, but whatever. And we should see that fairly big here because his corner range is going to be elastic. He has he has lots of draws that he can go with anyway, and he's a fish, so he wants to milk him for all he's worth. Uh, Fifty six is probably fine. I think when all the draws miss, our best player on this river is just going to be shoving. Okay, especially now, but he, but even even if he checks, we should just be shoving that river um, over bet shoving because we don't expect him to have a calling range which isn't queen x, and he's always calling queen x. So yeah. Okay. Um, so we're just going to sit out the next big blind. Uh, that should be 25. I'm not used to, to these sizings yet. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As I said, leave behind any comments on what you'd like to see, either on YouTube or um, or Grinder School. Though I will note that um, that I will remind you that the future parts of the series won't be appearing on YouTube. You will have to sign up to Grinder School to see them, and it's really an excellent site. It's it's cheap. It's full of full of excellent information, and and currently, I, I can only see the amount of good information improving. Um, there's really no there's really no reasonable excuse not to, ex except for absolute poverty. So yeah, um, I hope I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm um, just going to quickly talk about this hand. We can see better saw knots. Um, if if we don't see about this, we're basic we're basically not bluffing this flop. Um, but I don't think that that'll be too bad from an exploitative perspective because we expect a fish to fold very rarely there. Okay, thanks guys, this has been a definite article for YouTube and for Grind School. Um, I, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and please leave feedback, let me know what you want to see, and I will see you next time.